By mid-1943, Allied bombing was devastating Berlin. This was dangerous for all Berliners, but doubly so for Jews in hiding. We could not go into any bunker. We had to just be in the house. I, I remember very vividly that I basically prayed for the planes to come and smash Berlin to hell. I used to look up and the, the American fighter planes left and right going around the, the, uh, the uh, big American fortresses and they drowned, their bombs were coming out and I sat up there being happy and laughing knowing the bombs were not meant for me. When the air raid shelter around the corner suffered a direct hit, Jochen couldn't resist going to see. I went there after the air raid, and uh, uh, really to, we didn't know who was in there, to enjoy the sight, if you will. Um, when we, okay, when we came there, It was all children and mothers. And the Germans who already started to try to dig those people out, were, I don't know why, but they were stupefied. We got out seven children. I can't remember whether they were, yeah, some of them were really tiny and others were toddlers. I wouldn't know how old. Uh, seven children and the mothers we couldn't get out. All we could hear was their, their screaming, their, their moaning, and also children still. They were roughly, if I recall correctly, uh, uh, 200 or something children and, and mothers. Even though those were German children or German mothers, we could not just stand by. Blow your nose. In the summer of 1943, the Gestapo developed a new technique for finding secret Jews. They bribed and threatened Jews who had already been captured to betray their own people. The Gestapo offered these Jews a choice. They could face death or they could buy their own survival by working for the Nazis. They would search the streets of Berlin for people they knew or suspected were fellow Jews. The most dangerous of the catchers, or greifers as they were called, was Stella Kubler. She caught hundreds of Jews in the two years she worked for the Gestapo. Yeah. Uh, Ellen and Stella had been at art school together. This put Ellen in particular danger. Yeah. I ran into her in a restaurant. My mother always, God bless you, would think she was going to go to the bridge club or something with the hat, with the feathers and the furs hanging to the floor, you know. And she, so uh, my mother was very small. She was even shorter than I am. And fortunately, she was walking in front of me. I was holding the big door. And I look over her hat and on the end of the room, there is Stella and her fellow catcher, Isaacson. I really asked I was going to die. So I pulled, I, I thought I was going to really die. So I pulled my mother back, couldn't say a word. My mother just looked at me, I think she must have seen I was terror stricken, you know. It was her feathery head, 
She had this whole chicken on top of her head that saved me because she was so short. And we kept on changing bus to a streetcar, streetcar to subway for hours because I was afraid she might have seen us and either she or Isaacson would follow us. So we have to uh, see how that works. Whenever I was out, I was constantly aware of the danger lurking outside. I went out maybe once a week and bought food on the black market. I ran into a young girl, woman, uh, very pretty, and I just glanced at her, but we um, bonded immediately and had an immediate chemistry between us. Erica uh, knew that I was Jewish. She herself was a um, uh, German Christian uh, young woman. Uh, who, however, accepted me readily uh, as a Jew, as a human being, and ultimately as her lover. I can say I had terrible days in the undergrowth. Nobody should have them. But I had sometimes days and nights, they were so beautiful. When you're young, and you want to live, you do everything. I was laying there on the beach, white like a, I had no tan, and I sleep. All of a sudden a ball hits me, and a woman wakes me up and said, Mister, you, you're going to burn. We got very friendly. She said, you know, I promised my husband to, that I would call him. Why don't you come along? She told me, he made so many children for Hitler. He says, now I'm going to have a child from somebody else. And the phone booth has milky glass, where you see that the phone booth is inhabited. You might not see movements. I didn't know that. But who the hell cared? And uh, while she was talking to her husband, the thing happened. I said to myself, I hope you carry a real Jew in your belly. And that was for me the greatest satisfaction, to give a Nazi a Jewish child. I knew Erica about six weeks when I was caught in, uh, by the Gestapo. I went out in order to um, swap some food and uh, I was confronted by about three civilians, which turned out to be Gestapo. As I turned, there were another two in the back of me uh, later on, it turned out to be one of them was a Greifer Goldstein, who was a Jew. The others were all uh, Gestapo people. I kept on insisting my name is Carl Schmidt, um, at which time they opened the door and a uh, friend of mine came in, whose name is Henry Atlas, who immediately shouted, Isma, did they catch you too? Henry Atlas and his brother Horst were friends of Ismar's who had been captured in the same week as him. The Gestapo tried to use any kind of force in order to make me talk, asking where my mother was. They obviously hit me in order to find out more and even uh, brought in a fellow that they had uh, pretty well devastated before and they hit him some more so that the man died and uh, used that as a, a tool to tell me, listen, if you don't talk, you'll, the same thing will happen to you. And uh, I told him, there's nothing I can help you with, uh, so therefore you do what you have to do. 
I can only die one way. Uh, there's only one death for any, every one person. So uh, it was a toss-up. Do I die there or am I sent to my death? Station, all captured Berlin Jews were loaded on the trains for the concentration camps. On the um, 10th of September, uh, we were herded together. There were a whole bunch, I don't recall how many uh, soldiers in gray uniforms with uh, the um, SS insignia, the dead head on their cap. The officer held a speech that nobody will escape and that they will bring the entire transport to Auschwitz. By autumn 1943, over four million Jews had been killed by the Nazis. Transport here. This. See, the, the tenth of September is So obviously 50 pe people perished. Once we got settled in our section on the left side of the train, uh, I told uh, Henry and Horst uh, that I would that I had um, smuggled through some tools and that I would try to see if I can possibly um, get an opening so that we can escape. Uh, we then uh, clustered around one another to shelter us from the other people because uh, in all probability, uh, and I don't think I assume incorrectly, the other people would have denounced us. Uh, I then started uh, to drill some holes into the side of the uh, wagon. The tools that I used for the escape were this hand drill uh, with which I uh, created holes in a downward fashion, drilling one hole, then the next hole, then the next hole, then the next hole, until I had sufficient room to use this metal saw blade. With the tools he had smuggled from the Gestapo prison, Isma started to cut through the three-inch thick walls of the cattle truck. We started to sing nostalgic songs very, very loudly to overdrone the uh, noise of the saw. We kept on singing and people were complaining. Uh, this little baby was crying and uh, People were just saying, are you completely out of your mind to sing while we are going into our death? It took six hours to cut a hole big enough to jump through. The uh, first one that jumped out was Henry. The second one was Horst. When I jumped out, I had 
pretty much mentally prepared myself to jump away from the train in order not to be crushed under the wheels. I jumped, I fell flat on my belly. I picked up my head and I saw the red lights of the back of the train quite a distance away and felt relieved it worked. From what I learned after the war is that entire transport went right into the gas chamber, including a one-year-old child. By September 1943, the secret Jews who had survived in Berlin had been in hiding for seven months. Once Ismar jumped from the Auschwitz train, he made his way back here. Now the Gestapo had his name, he was in even greater danger. He and his mother were taken in by his girlfriend, Erika's family. Erika, who was a very kind-hearted woman, uh, said, I'll take you with me and you will stay with my parents. I did not go out at all any longer because I didn't need to fend for food. The father uh, bought the extra food on the black market for us. Um, and I was um, uh, anyway deathly afraid to be outside because the uh, Gestapo was then looking for me, specifically looking for me. It was not anymore a, um, a global find the Jew, but it was find the escaped Jew. Ismar was trapped in Erika's father's house. When danger threatened, he and his mother hid in a two-foot gap behind a false wall. A few months later, the situation grew even more difficult. Erika came one day and told me that she's um, expecting. Uh, and I was very, very, very surprised and, of course, devastated. I felt um, extremely worried what's going to happen uh, if they find out that we had a child together um, and that she is partly Jewish. Uh, not only I, but she, her whole family and everybody else would, would be killed. Erica's child, my son, was born in October 1944. By the autumn of 1944, the Germans were losing the war. The push to exterminate the Jews seemed to grow stronger. Berlin's half-Jews had been allowed to survive the final roundup, but the Gestapo took any opportunity to send them to the camps. When Ika injured her arm and couldn't work, she too was in danger. We sit here in the house, where the Partei Zentrale was, and where I was vorgeladen. Wurde. Er hat mich damals unterhalten und hat der gesagt zu mir, dass ich wegen meines Armes, der nicht geheilt ist, zur Heilbehandlung weggeschickt werde und dann wird das besser. Und als er das sagte, war mir klar, dass ich nach Auschwitz komme. Denn es wurde allen erzählt, die sie abgeholt haben, immer irgendwas, die müssen gesund werden und Arbeit, weiß nicht was. Ja? Und äh, war so ein großer, stattlicher Mann. Aber stattliche Männer sind ja leider Gottes immer feige. Und als die Sirene ging, war Fliegerlarm, die Sirene ging, da ist er gerannt und zwar in den Luftschutzkeller und da drüben ist er. 
Das war für mich die Gelegenheit, alle Papiere, die auf seinem Schreibtisch lagen, einfach mitzunehmen. Und da bin ich nach Hause gerannt während des Alarms zu meiner Mutti und habe gesagt, Mutti, so und so ist es, ich muss weg. Ich sage, das Alarm kam. Also für mich war der Fliegeralarm eine Erlösung. After 21 months in hiding, Larry was captured in a Gestapo raid on the pool hall. He was deported on one of the last transports from Berlin. The transport list of the 52nd Osttransport, September, what's the date? What does it say here? Okay. 6. September 6, 1944. And all these names are the last Jews of Berlin. Lothar Israel Orbach. Born on May 22, 1924. That makes me today 75, almost 75 years old. I was born in Falkenburg in Pomerania. I'm an Arbeiter. You know what an Arbeiter is? A working man. They transported animals on this car and that's how we went to Auschwitz. By the time Larry arrived at Auschwitz, one million Jews had died there. I walked outside, and when it I stepped outside, a, a, one prisoner got up from a bench, a wooden bench, and a little ta table standing in front of the bench, and uh, he made me sit down very politely, very nice and he took my left arm he took out a pen and he heated up the pen whenever he uh, made a letter and a number he always had a like a it's some kind of a heater and he pushed it in into ink and to the heater and and he put in the number B9761. I know it was a number, not anymore a man, not anymore a person. In April 1945, the Allies reached Berlin. For 12 days, Russian soldiers fought a street-by-street -street battle for control of the city. Berlin was destroyed around them, but the hidden Jews knew they were nearly free. There was no more water or anything. And you had to wear your helmet and crawl on your tummy with two pails. And we took turns. It was my sister-in-law's turn. It was Ruth's turn. She got dressed in her helmet and crawled across the street. And all of a sudden, I see her standing up in the middle of the street, and I'm yelling, get down. And she's shaking her head, and she's coming back with the empty pails. What's going on? She says, the Russians are here. They're in the street giving out pickles. and we went outside and oh, it was great, you know. And my father-in-law came walking down the street. He took one look at the two of us out. He grabbed us by the arm. He said, up there, and he locked us up. Well, because the young women got raped. We figured it was all propaganda, you know. But to our really enjoyment, they did rape German women. You see, you had it coming. 
You were the ones who yelled, Heil Hitler. You were the ones who had Führer's picture. You were the ones who voted for that man. You, you know, be my guest. It fortunately goes away after a while. Around 1,500 secret Jews made it through the war in Berlin. This is a tiny number compared to the dead, but many German cities had almost no Jewish survivors. I basically held every German responsible. I told Erika that I definitely will not stay one day longer in Germany than I have to, and that I have registered to go to the United States. I would like to marry her and take her and my boy with me. She decided she um, wanted to stay in Berlin with her son. Even though it meant deserting Erika and his two-year-old son, Ismar could not bear to stay in Germany. Ika did stay in Berlin and brought up three children here. Nein, ich muss Ihnen sagen, ich bin in Berlin geboren. Ich bin ein Berliner Kind. Und ich wollte eigentlich nie weg. Und ich habe mich auch immer als Deutsche gefühlt. Wisst ihr, man kann ja nicht mal gleich vor allem ausrücken. Ja, also, ich habe gedacht, jetzt kann ich leben. Wisst ihr, wie ich das meine, ja? Ich bin hier geboren, jetzt kann ich leben. This little synagogue was rebuilt. We had the first Jewish wedding in Berlin after the war. We got married here in 1945. 46. Oh God. Cut. 45, she's right. We were married in 45 and 46. We went to the, to right, the United right, States. Right. We were married here in 45 uh, and were attended by all the people who had helped us. They were all here. And all seven of us eventually Together. ended up in the United States because we all happened to live through the whole thing together. Larry survived Auschwitz. He too left Germany and emigrated to America in 1946. I loved Berlin and I, I can't uh, hate Berlin. Berlin had nothing to do with it. It's my generation, Germans, today the grey-haired ones, that one, the ones that cannot look us in the eye, the ones the, who know what they did. And they did it with pleasure. They did it with pleasure, with profits, with pride, with Nazi pride. That made a Jew out of me. That's one thing that I uh, can't Hitler, that he made a Jew out of me. When I came to the States, I had nightmares no, no good, no good, good. for a no long good. period of time. Constantly recurring dreams of being hunted by the Gestapo and reliving uh, fear. I do not want to fall into a trap of giving the satisfaction to the Nazis, of continuing to suffer due to their treatment. I was able finally to suppress any dreams whatsoever. Was that good? forcing myself to sleep and um, got a little bit more peace of mind. 